I'll do that again because I am not good. <laughs> I'm not good at all. <laughs> oh, welcome back, everyone. We uh, Josh is, was going to restart this episode, but we'll just roll with it because equipment mal- malfunctions happen. And uh, Better. Tell, tell us, tell Josh. Uh, t- no, th- word. I, mal- I am Josh. Word, I am Josh. Word functions. Mal- My name is Josh. <laughs> word malfunctions happen or as well. Yeah. Uh, you caught your cable in your Ooh. chair. I did. I must have, as I went to press the button, I ran over it and it then got caught in the handle and it, it was just a mess. Big mess. You look like you could deal with a gin. I, I could definitely right, do with a gin. Let's, let's, let's get away. Let's, the agenda underway. Let's jump straight into this. We have the Prohibition, because we're big fans of Prohibition, the, the Prohibition Cello Gin. Uh, this is because we've actually got a busy night ahead of us. We've got a bit of, I've got a Zoom call shortly and then you, we've got a we've got re- filming another video. Need to do and then probably have some food at some point. All these, all these things. So this is a lower percentage one, which yep. is, uh, yeah, we figured we could probably have this now and then keep a little bit mild. later. Yeah, keep it mild when we have to be on camera. So uh, this is what we are having here. It's a blood orange type It is a very nice thing. gin. There you go. Let's pour it's, that um, one in you. It's, well, sometimes it's nice just to have that little, little bit more mild gin. Mm-hmm. Just not... Not as strong alcohol wise. Still tastes really nice. And a little bit more? It's, yeah, why not? Um, I, I like this one straight. As we talk about, like low alcohol, just pour more in. <laughs> <laughs> Double look, the amount. Look at oh. us go. You can have. Oh, all right. Cheers. Cool. Cheers. For, uh, for the cello. This is excellent. Good. Went down to Prohibition the oh. other day. We did. And uh, they shared out our posts about them, so that was very uh, That was very nice. It was very good. And, and good on, we talked about that, I think, the other week about, you know, like just sharing out. No, we didn't. We talked about this on one of our catch ups. Yes. Mm, about about sharing out posts from um, end users. Yeah. From clients, from customers, from yeah, where they've tagged you in a post or so. Um, we may as well bring that up now, which we was, may, may was, as well. was not part jo- of the discussion. Jump straight in. Let's go. But uh, but this was, it was discussed in one of our uh, catch ups recently, which we'll talk about uh, in depth more. But it was talking about, you know, why, how do you. Do you do it and, and what results? And someone was asking, you may remember this better than I do, and if if, if you do, jump in. I'm trying but, to remember now. Yeah, me too. Because uh, the the story, the, the talk was, is there value in it? And, you know, because the numbers don't generally do very well. And you and I put forward, and, and I think a couple others backed us up on it, was that it's not about the numbers you get from that post. Yes. It is about the person that posted it and them going, oh, they shared my post out. Like, yeah. You know, feeling like, hey, look, we're, we're paying attention. We're here. You, you get that nice little bit of recognition of like, mm. oh, that, that's my post sitting up on their story yeah. right now. Which is which is rad. And we, we had that with Prohibition, you know, they share the post out. You're like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, sweet, cool. You're paying attention. Just a it's, nice little like, thanks, guys. Thanks for like mm. coming in, visiting or buying our product or being yeah. involved. And there is a bit of social proofing with it as well where someone's saying, hey, oh, look, I actually I like what these guys do and, you know, sharing out someone's experience, which is always, you know, testimonial sort of level, yes. um, which is always, always a benefit. So... That was uh, one of ours. Now, was that the one where we were in Tasmania? We were. Right. We were sat in a very lovely spot out in the middle of <laughs> we the park. Were. We were. With yep. a little cafe off to the side. That was closed. Yep. Closing. Closing. We got there before they closed, luckily. We managed to managed Just. to get some um, some reserves. Yep. So we yep. got some uh, gin and tonics, <laughs> surprisingly. We did. And that was good. That was our third hangout. We've, yep. we've done a few now. It was. Yeah. And so that one started off a little bit slower. Yes. Uh, it was a little bit quieter. Normally we, we jump on the call a bit earlier and sort of sit around and wait. Uh, and then, you know, about, about the time we start, everyone jumps in. There was only, what, three of us, four of us at the start. Yeah. And so we're just chatting away, you know, enjoying, yeah. enjoying it. And then all these people rushed in. <laughs> yeah, it, it was great. And um, they were different people too. Yes. Which, yeah. which was even some better. Of the same got, got and some, some, some different ones. Yeah, had, had the regulars sort of in the start and then mm-hmm. had some fresh faces come along and join, which was awesome to see. Which is good. So, guys, if you are watching this, if you found this clip somewhere, wherever you may have found, we every second Friday at 4.30 p.m. Uh, Adelaide time, which is where we normally are, uh, 5 o'clock Eastern uh, Eastern States or most Eastern States, now we're daylight saving, so it's all over the shop. All messed up. All messed up. Pat, we, uh, we basically jump together on a call, on a Teams call, and talk about what we've experienced, stuff we've found out, trends that are happening. We'll bring up a point or two to discuss, like uh, social proofing, like yeah. sharing out people's posts and talk about everyone in the room. Well, if they've done it and they've got some experience with it, they, they do that. And then if they've got questions, they can ask away. Yeah, uh, it's been great so far too because it's always, always we've had we've had a topic and it's always just delved and split off. And because you've got mm. a range of different people in different industries, it's everyone's seeing different things. And you, you know, you can kind of take away a little bit of like, oh, that's working for them. Let me try that. Mm. 
Let's see how that goes. Absolutely. So it's been very good. We've 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 gotten value out of it, and I think others. We've, we've been told that others have definitely got value out of it. Yeah. So which is uh, which is encouraging. It's, it's a it's a good exchange of knowledge for everyone because the best way to learn is by everyone else's mistakes as well as your own. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Definitely agree. Yeah. Speaking of mistakes. Um, I don't know where I was going with that segue. What, what a segue. But, um, but, you know, have you had any recently, Josh? Um, I mean, always, normally. <laughs> one of the mistakes that I, uh, I would like to bring up, because one of the things we wouldn't mind talking about, oh, no, before we get into that, we, we generally try and kick off with a bit of a business update. So I'm going yes. to get onto your mistake shortly to pick on you. Now, I'm just going to oh, let you sit, sit, there oh, no. and, <laughs> sit there and simmer for a little while. Uh, and while you're thinking about what on earth is he going to bring, or which one? We're trying to narrow it <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah, trying to narrow it down. Yeah. <laughs> um, business update. So we uh, we booked in to start doing uh, external party client work. So you guys yes. who'll be following this know that we do work for a business that I own that, that's been sort of our main sort of reason to exist. Uh, but now um, we talked about gaining our last clients in the last chat. And here we are. We have we have a client, and we've we gained clients. We're booked, <laughs> booking in our first uh, first external filming session, so that is very exciting. Uh, and so we can start, you know, putting some stuff that we've learned by doing our own brands internally for a long time um, to someone else. Yeah, and it's uh, I'm fascinated by seeing how it's going to go delving into a different industry as well. Yeah, because it's, it's we've true. we've got a client which is fantastic, and it's also it's a very different market to be able to go cool. Like it's a whole different mm. gauge and analytics and stuff that we can look at and see. All right, like what what works for other people, yep. not just necessarily what what do we deal with? Because yes. every, every industry have its has its small little nuances. little things oh. and nuances that work yes. for them that don't work for others. Mm. Some stuff works across the board. So I'm fascinated. Absolutely. And so, uh, and in line with that, although not directly connected with that, we also put someone else on, on staff here. So we have another, uh, another, another person in the building, uh, a couple of days a week, uh, yeah. editing and, and very one day, one day we'll get him on the, on the show and actually talk about how that all came about. Cause it was a, it was a, it was an interview and then a year later got a job. Yes. <laughs> Yes. But we'll, so it's a good story. We'll delve into that story and uh, how that came about, and perhaps for uh, for those guys who are wanting to get into this sort of industry and be creators and 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 make videos and do that sort of gear, uh, it could give you some hope that um that all is not lost at the first yes the first rejection. Uh, well, and so anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get him it's in. It's a story for another day, that it one. It's a story for Very another day. Very good story for another day. Look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, what, what was my mistake? <laughs> Ticking away in my head it here. It is ticking away. It is ticking away. Uh, we went down to Tassie. We went down to Tassie to film an event. Yep. Uh, and it all went well and everything was good. Now, you film these types of events on a fairly regular basis. That's a sporting competition. Yep. And you have been uh, working on your camera rig uh, and, and refining it and doing things over the past year. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a constant evolution. Yeah. And you, at the last one in Darwin where we were, yep. you said you basically nailed it. It was perfect. Yeah. And then you changed it, it was for not. Tassie. Yes, I did. And you came back very sore I and did. complaining <laughs> that it was no longer perfect. A little bit. Uh, I might be talking yeah, about Maybe a bit, a bit more of a little bit. <laughs> I made a whole TikTok on it. You so did. It, it you was did, an issue. You did make a whole TikTok on it. I did. So um, I guess that, uh, not really, I don't really care what you did. Um, you, you refine, you learn. But what I thought might be interesting, because we haven't delved into it too much on this show, is talking about equipment. <laughs> now, let me preface this by, uh, by saying, and I know that I am the big baddie in this side of things, because I keep telling yourself and Sam and the other guys, don't make heaps of videos about equipment. Yes. Right, because um, a big part of our oh part of our audience are really into video creation. Yeah, and a bigger part of our audience are owning businesses and interested in making learning what they can from our experience from in the marketing sense and in, in creating stuff. So we've always shied away a little bit from going full as deep as you guys want to go with video. Yes. So I know I'm the restriction, and now I'm the one saying we should do an episode about equipment. Yeah. But um, watch out! Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So Josh, you're very, very excited. But I think there's an appropriate time. Like from time to time, definitely is worth talking about, delving into, looking into it, talking about what it is. But one of the things that we don't 
I, I guess one of the reasons I'm hesitant about always delve, uh, focusing on equipment is that, yeah, we have a pretty nice camera. Now it's not the flashiest, craziest cameras out there, but it's pretty nice. And for yeah. most business owners who are wanting to start making TikToks and bits and pieces, I don't want people to get hung up on they don't have the equipment. Yeah. And that's my big thing with it that I, I don't want people to feel like, oh, well, I, I can't start a TikTok or I can't yeah, really I, lean oh, into YouTube. I don't have that, so I can't do that. Yeah, exactly right. And that is, you know, that is not, uh, that is not our experience. You know, we've had the average equipment for a long time and then just upgraded and upgraded. And, but I always had an interest in video production. So I probably upgraded a bit quicker than most needed yep. to. And so, you know, we, we now are using fancy mics and fancy stands and fancy lights and fancy gin. Uh, actually, no, go with the gin. Yep, no, sticks. fancy gin is very important, <laughs> very important. But um, it, it is also good to be able to look into some of the equipment that we can use uh, and recommend, uh, yep. both in the sort of nicer gear and also maybe some of the cheaper options. I so think um, – You had a couple of things to say on equipment because you always do. I do. And <laughs> I, I think I've – my mentality behind it is slowly starting to shift from more of that, like, you know, it, it is cool to play with very fancy, very expensive gear. Yes. It's very cool to do that. But there is on the flip side of sometimes it's actually not practical. Mm -hmm. okay. There has been some videos that we've made that are, it's, you know, look at, all right, we've quickly got to get this. And it's, you look at a big fancy rig that's set up or mm -hmm. cool. This is a little camera that has a, a microphone on it. That's actually going to be way easier. Get the same, um, you know, point across. I'm just going to grab that and do that. Yep. So I, my mentality has shifted behind it, but of of course I'm still, you know, oh, like cinema head, like all, all about fancy gear and equipment. Absolutely. And right now, as you guys are perhaps watching, depending where this thing is up into its journey, uh, one of these cameras that you guys are watching this podcast on, if you're watching the YouTube version, obviously if you're listening, you don't care at all. Yeah. But uh, one of these cameras is moving. It and is. this is something that you uh, wanted to experiment with? This is the with? first. I've, you know, it's one of those things where I, I saw it in another <laughs> podcast and just went, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Catch and it was, you know, we actually, we have the ability to do that. So mm -hmm. let's try. Do you know one of the first places I saw that in recent memory that I'm like, oh, that noticeable in a subtle way was uh, David Letterman's show. Uh, my next guest needs no introduction. They, most of yep. their cameras are moving to some degree. Yeah. Subtle, slowly, um, but doing it. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's another, it's another dynamic. Yeah. Uh, just changes it up from stationary, stationary, stationary. You just cut to one that you go... Yeah, but and a lot of the time you don't. I found that I haven't consciously really noticed it that much mm -hmm. until I've actually thought and gone, oh, like you know, because I start to sit there and look at things now and go, how do they do all their things? And you get, oh, that's actually really cool, just to just to draw you in a little bit that everything's yep. just shifting, just shifting. Nothing's just stationary, and you go, oh, this is boring. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> well, I lost. So my are we going to like deep dive into it or? Well, uh. Yes, let's go. One, I, I've got a, I've got a leading question for you. Yeah. All right, and I'm, I'm asking you to justify yourself here. You didn't realize this was happening. I didn't realize this was happening, but here we find ourselves. Here we go. Now, do you happen to have the TikTok focus rig anywhere near you? Is that is that within? It is. Is that it that's is, not it being? Is, it used? is sitting up on our shelf. Okay, can you grab yeah. that for a moment? Because uh, this is this is run over my. <laughs> sort your cables out. But this is, a, this is a question that fascinates me. So Josh and the guys here, because we do so many TikToks, have dedicated a camera set up to TikToks. And Josh will rock up uh, and, and in my office and bust through the door and be like, what do you think of this? And ask me some question that's been asked on TikTok, which is great. That's what we want. Now I've got a – so we tell, tell us, you know, give us a little flex. So, what do we use for, yeah. for most of our TikToks? Currently we have a Sony A6400. It's just – it's in a small red cage – uh, has a Rode VideoMic Pro on it. Okay. Which the microphone kind of varies depending on where this one ends up. Okay. We're, we're shifting between mics at the moment, but the okay. we're between mics our, at present. Our end goal, which is jumping a little bit more down, sort of I guess the camera snob okay. route, is to have some side handles on it. Yep. And a little V mount battery, so you can just if you're out filming, okay. you you can film all day and you're not changing batteries. And okay. obviously that's that's starting to delve down a bit more fancy camera gear that. Right. It's completely in no way needed. Okay. <laughs> cool. It's so just got, a nice to have. I've got a workflow question for you on this. So you, we've got a phone here that is pretty good, right? We do. It's pretty, are you recording? I was about to. <laughs> why not? You're making it. You're making it. This is very meta. You, 
So what are you saying is I should be filming you filming Ooh, me? Oh, do we go full meta? Okay. Yeah, so here Josh, we go. You are holding what we use as a TikTok rig. I am now, and I can't see your face, which is great. Yep, that's no, better. No, no, put it back. Is that better? No, cover it up. <laughs> better cover it up. Um, why do you? What's your workflow compared to a phone? Because it, it like I. I struggle to sort of comprehend this to some degree. And I think people watching may, it's like, why do you use a dedicated camera for TikTok? Why don't you use a phone where you can press record, do your TikTok like we're doing now, press stop, and moments later it's uploaded. Yeah. Uh, The big part of that workflow is the fact that our videos aren't being posted just to TikTok. Mm -hmm. So they are being posted across any, any platform that you really want to post them to. Yeah. So the workflow, one, one thing we've sort of found is if you're taking stuff from TikTok and saving it and then taking it to another platform, just, it doesn't come across super well. And I mean, you could dive fully down that in, you know, Instagram doesn't like videos that have TikTok watermarks and all that kind of thing. That's, that's a whole topic on its own, Mm -hmm. but it's that workflow of I'm producing a video that's going to two, three, four, five different channels on different social platforms. So being able to have it watermark free sitting there and actually a big part is my workflow is on a computer now. So I will bring stuff in, we'll chuck it on the computer. Everything gets scheduled on the computer. Everything gets posted from the computer. So it's, it's a much nicer workflow for that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So flip side to that. (laughs) Yeah. I will counter myself on that one. Please do. Um, cause I've been recommending this to people lately. Actually, I've had three or four questions about, Oh, what should I use to edit on in bits and pieces? And my one thing I've come back to is, um, CapCut. Right. So Ca- yep. CapCut is a editing software that is big on mobile, but they've also released a desktop version for Macs. Interesting. Yep. And so I've personally actually used that more in the past week than I have our dedicated Premiere Pro mm-hmm. because one, it's easy. You've got sounds from TikTok and all that stuff embedded Cause, in cause the software. CapCut Cap is from TikTok, isn't it? It's effectively it is. I think their... the parent company of TikTok also has CapCut. Yeah, because effectively the interface is very similar to TikTok, isn't it? It's basically what's embedded very into similar. TikTok. Yeah. yeah, you can do your captions that then have the auto-generated tech, um, yeah. audio and all that kind of thing. Okay. So what, um, so I, I get the point of like, all right, I'm, I'm filming it and this is going to go on Insta and Shorts and this and this. But you haven't counted the point of I can film this on my phone yeah, and I just film it straight to the phone rather than in TikTok and then moments later it's on TikTok, Insta and Shorts. Yeah. So w- what is it? Is it is this like a, an economy of scale? Is the fact that you'll come down with this and you'll film like 15 TikToks back to back, right? Or film yeah. short, short, what do we call them? Short video, short form videos. Short form. Short form vertical video otherwise known as TikToks or Reels or Shorts, um, you'll film a whole stack of them back to back. And then because you're doing so many in one go, there's an element like the time it takes to bring that into the computer, bring it up into an editor, tidy it all up, tweak it, and then put it out. That actually doesn't make that much of a difference because you're doing so much in one go. Yeah. Is I that- guess there's there's also uh, the extra little bit of – uh, being able to run a dedicated microphone. Okay. Yep. As well. So you get, um, audio is a big thing. If you yep. have nice sounding audio and average looking video, mm-hmm. most people will deal with that. Yeah. If you have a video that just sounds terrible, it looks, it looks amazing. Most people still won't watch that because yeah. you just hear it and you okay. go, Oh, that's gross. Okay. But there is nothing wrong. You still, you still from no. time to time will pick up the phone I, and just film a TikTok. I will film a lot of things on the phone because there's the one, it's the convenience. That yeah. is the biggest winner. The convenience of something's happening or you have, even just when you have that random thought <coughs> and you go, oh, mm. this would make a great video. Cool. Yep. Post it. Send. Done. <laughs> How many gins deep are you on those ones? Lots. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> All this would make them. a great video. Send it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you tag Ryan Reynolds in it and then it didn't yes, go so well. Yes, and then so you well. go, oh, no. Yeah, whoops. Anyway. And you wake up you, and go, why is my chest sore? If you, can, if you can find my TikTok, you'll find that video we're referencing. Cool. But uh, anyway. Uh Okay, cool. So, so the phone versus the the camera. So, from from someone watching who's running their own business, are you telling them to buy a camera for it, or are you saying stick, a phone? Stick with your phone. Just go with the phone. Yep. Are you suggesting a microphone? Maybe a good little bonus. Yep, hundred percent. A microphone would yep. be a nice, nice little have. And I mean, to counter myself, there are microphones that you can hook up to your phone. <clears throat> there is. Yeah. Yep. 
I mean, I can, I can probably get my example. Of that. Uh, do it. Well, while we're yeah. here, for those who are listening, they'll love being able to hear, see the microphone. <laughs> it's not attached anymore. Oh, okay. I took it off. That's right, because it was in the way, because I used this rig the other day. It's fine. I can unplug it. Um, yeah. So this is, this is if, you were, if you were looking to get a little bit more serious about the vertical short-form, short-form video, something like this. Now, for those who are listening, uh, we have a small little tripod here with a like a phone cage on it. Yeah. And then there's a handle on the side. Why is there a handle on the side, Josh? The handle on the side is because it was something that came included with the cage. Okay. The handle is not a necessity. Just to, to pretend be, that's not there. Yeah. But to be fair, I use the handle. So I often, I often will grab this. So if you can imagine try a little small little tripod about the sort of, I don't know, 15 centimetres high uh, to the base of the tripod and then you got your mount on top of that. Then there's like a, a thing that your phone drops into, a little cage, and then on the side of that is a little handle. And I I often grab this and go and do lives with it. And yep. uh, this handle is very useful because then you're not holding the phone, not covering anything, you're not going to bump anything on the phone. You can grab it and move it around there. And on top of the handle sits the microphone, although that can yes, sit on top it, of the phone. It can sit on the, on the that cage. Does, uh, that does sort of end up in the in the camera a little bit um and so this little rig is very useful so perhaps if you were getting pretty serious about short form but without going to the 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 camera and i really like i honestly think that the camera level is only because the workflow is such a standardization here where you get data off the camera and put it into the edit system and and you've got you've already got your your presets and all this sort of gear ready to roll so because we do so much short and long form video, it just sort of go, flows in the mix. Yes. But I think for the for the far majority of people watching and listening, um, if you are, you know, if you're wanting to up your game a little bit, some sort of like a little upgrade for your uh, for your phone is a really good way to do it. Now people yeah, make things. lenses for phones, Josh. You've never dealt they with do. that. They do. That's path. that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this this cage can actually take those lenses in it. Okay. You've never delved so, into that uh, though? No, never have. Is that because you don't? Maybe I might go buy one and try it. Oh, look out. There we go. Mm. Know what we're doing tomorrow. All right. Well, keep, keep us posted yeah. on that. See if there's yeah. a I see think, if there's a benefit. I think the, the one time that I would start recommending it's time to upgrade to a camera yep. is if, if you're starting to produce some long form content. Okay. So yeah, ju- jumping into maybe some product videos, things like that. And mm-hmm. you just, you want it looking a bit nicer. You want to take some, you know, some slightly better product photos. And yes. you just, you want to up that production game a little bit more. Yep. That's, that's when it's time to start, start looking at some cameras. Okay. And, and yeah, when you do, there's, there's so many different options nowadays that yep. you, you don't need to go and buy the biggest and fanciest. If you don't want to go all that way, so, something like this, which I believe costs, about twelve hundred dollars now. Okay, a thousand dollars. This is the sixty four hundred. Is, $6, is or fantastic. Equivalent. Yeah, or okay. equivalent. Yep. And so, uh, for for a small business that's wanting to take photos of their products and things like that, yeah, is a phone fine, or are they they needing a dedicated camera? And if so, why? Where is that tipping point? Yeah, I guess that's it's getting. I guess it depends where you're wanting your production value to sit. Okay. There's probably so, an element, actually, we should clarify here of what phone because there's some, some as you've moved along, yeah, we both run iPhone 12s. Yes. We haven't bothered upgrading yet. Oh, yeah. I am waiting for them to release the USB-C charging versions uh, yeah. because that is that is coming. Yes. Thanks, Europe. Um, <laughs> and so uh, that, that is yeah, sort of what I'm – Waiting for, but but there, yeah. If you if you got an iPhone six, probably grab the camera. Yes, hundred yes, <laughs> percent. Pick up the camera or a new phone. Um, but you know, iPhone ten sort of upwards. The cameras are starting to get yeah. not just good, like really good. Yeah. And uh, so, anyways, so what tips you from from a phone to a camera at standalone? Um, my big thing is, I guess, like a a proper product shoot where you've got your studio, you've got some lights there, and yep. you are trying to get that photo in it. Sort of in its optimal, you want your product looking the absolute best. And also a bit of wiggle room with, you know, mm-hmm. resolution size because while, you know, phones are, you know, what a new iPhone is 48 megapixel or something. Yep. I've, I've still found that with my, when I was taking photos on our other camera that was 12 megapixels and the phone that was 12 megapixels, the one on the camera was still nicer. Yes. Okay. It, it's still nicer. Unfortunately, having a sensor that is, you know, this big. It, it does make a difference. You're it capturing does. a lot more light, a lot more data. So mm. when when you're starting to do that things and, you know, you want a bit more variability of this photo to be able to go, I want it in 
this mode or I want it looking like this. I want to change the aspect ratios. Mm -hmm. Just get a little more playroom and wiggle room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Gives you some options. Gives you some more options. Do you have a preferred editing software on the phone for those who are using the phone for photos? For photos? Yeah. Um, I like Lightroom. Okay. So Lightroom Ad on Adobe it. Lightroom do a, a version that you can have on the computer, the phone, a tablet, and everything syncs together. Okay. So if you're editing something on the computer and you're out and about and you go, oh, I really need that photo. I can open the app and you've got the exact photo that you edited, all the settings, yep. all there. Yep. But okay. if you don't want to jump into Adobe and pay the money for it, I previously <laughs> used an app called Snapseed. 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 Okay. And I thoroughly enjoyed that. Okay. Gives you, gives you all the features, most of the features that you would get with Adobe. Mm -hmm. Just you didn't get that linking back to connection back, connection to, back to the cloud. Okay. So yeah, mm. it's, it depends what you want really. Yep. Okay. Very good. And you had some experience the other weekend uh, with a Zoom recorder. I did. It was now, probably my first time playing with it, really. Podcasts are a, uh, are a big thing. And we've recognized, obviously, we've started this podcast because we, we, you know, we attest that they are very good. We, not that this podcast is necessarily very good, just podcasts in general are. We will get better yes. here. But the, the other podcasts I'm involved with, and I have done a few uh, from, from time to time. But the other podcast that we've done has been very, uh, very well received. Has run for a long time, six or so, yeah, maybe been seven years. Longer uh, than me, much longer than you've been alive. And so, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Uh, but it has been around for a long time. And so I've I've used sort of all sorts of stuff. And and again, podcasts can be done, uh, you know, on the cheap or more expensive. So yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, the gear that we have now where we've sort of ended up. Obviously, we do this as a video podcast as well. Let's leave yeah. that to the side for the moment. But from an audio point of view, we're running Shaw SM7Bs. Yeah, SM7Bs. Yep. Which uh, go through a cloud lifter. Yep. Boost somewhere on the floor. Bit. And then they jump into the um, Roadcaster, the mm. Gen Gen 1. Yep. I don't know what the, the original one's it was called. Just, yeah, the, just Roadcaster. Yep. Uh, these microphones are, are good. I, I like them. I like the tone they give. Uh, we also have over there. What's that? It's a road. That is the road. Is it the pro Procaster? I believe it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something on those lines. Uh, I have used uh, quite a range of microphones over the course of this uh, setup. So uh, the the session or the the setup before this one uh, was not the Shores. Uh, it was the Procasters and yep. uh, just those. And then before that, we had. The Procasters running into – no, we, we had uh, – didn't even have the road uh, Broadcaster. Oh, yep. all these caster names. There's, I can't keep up so with it. so many of them. Uh, and so prior to that, we were recording off a Zoom H6. Now, the yep. Zoom is a little box about this big, and you've got four XLR channels and microphone sort of cable channels, uh, but you can also add another two, which is where the H6 yep. comes from. And so you can do that, uh, and that was that was really good. Uh, and they are battery powered, and you can we and I still we still use them from time to time. We do it. Um, it actually now lives on our camera setup. Like it is, it is for the time being. There. For the time being, yeah. but I think that that for for us to do some podcasts remotely, that yes. will come into uh, will come be handy. perfect. Mm. Well, because it's it's super super portable, and the it fact is. that you all you need is the zoom, the cables for your microphones, and the microphones. And a memory card. Don't forget the memory <laughs> card. Really important. <laughs> this is true. Uh, and before that, we were using these uh, Shaw, not the SM58s, which are the, the classic yep. uh, uh, vocal microphone, but there was a cheaper version of that, and that's what we used to run the podcast. Ooh, the one on. under it. The one under it, and they were about uh, – about 60 bucks or something on those lines. And we originally – so we were using the, the – um, oh, there's some noises happening outside – the Zoom – Six and H six, and then before that we were using a. I don't even know the. It might have been a Yamaha. Uh, you plug it into your computer. It was like a computer oh, interface. I reckon that's sitting in the very back of our cupboard somewhere. Oh really? <laughs> okay. I think so. That's that's probably what we used. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure if I ever sold it. Um, UR forty four was the code. Steinberg UR44. I can't even remember. Was, yeah. I just know how to grab the box and put it in the back of the cupboard. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that um, that beast was uh, was what we originally started on. And look, those podcasts sound horrible, but yeah. they worked. And you're communicating, you're talking, and people will people will generally there's there's sort of three uh, three elements of a podcast that that are important. One, 
uh, is the hosts. Yep. If the hosts are interesting and, and useful and that sort of gear, uh, and and you, you, know, you get you sort of get on well with listening to them, the the content that is covered, yes. right, and the depth of content and the, the information whether it's relevant to you or they cover it well or they whatever it might be, and then the third one is is the production values, and if you get two of those three right. Generally, it's going to be a pretty reasonable podcast. Yeah. Now, it's not going to be Joe Rogan sort of level, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's going to be uh, enough that, you know, you'll gain a bit of an audience and people enjoy listening to it. Yeah, and they'll get people engaged. They will generally sort of, uh, they'll generally uh, look after, <laughs> they'll, they'll forgive one of them. Yeah. But if you've got, like, so if you've got really interesting hosts that are fantastic with really good content, but the audio is terrible, you'll sort of fight your way through it because what you're listening yeah. to is so great. Oh, I love this. I'm learning things from this. Yes, yeah. I'm in. But if you've got, if but if you, if you're like, the content's really good, but these guys are super boring and there's no life to them and I can barely hear them, I'm out. Yeah. And, and so it's sort of that, that of those three, you need to at least get two of them uh, and then, you know people will sort of uh, honour that and, and, yeah. and run with it. Obviously, if you can get all three, that's great. It's, but, but yeah, work on work on the other ones because if equipment comes in time. Yeah. So, yeah, a little bit of a history of uh, the podcast gear we have used uh, and that first setup, I think, for all the microphones and the interface and all that sort of gear was 800 bucks or something along those lines. Yeah. I think – About um, the price of one of these microphones now. <laughs> yes. Um, I think nowadays too, though, there is, there is such a variety – of bits and pieces that you can use. Oh, so, so many like, There is so many other desks that you can chuck things in that, you know, will take over the Roadcaster or the H6. There's mm. other little units you can travel around with. There's there's adapters for your phone. Yeah. You, you could run a podcast I, off I, of your phone. I have done this. So we, and I, I'm not going to name the podcast because I don't want anyone to find it, but there was a – oh, look out. Here's some gear here. That got um, real fancy. <laughs> there, there is a podcast that I did, and I did a daily podcast. And I did it for 50 episodes, I reckon, every day. Yeah, uh, and so I was recording in all sorts of situations. And so some situations I would be recording in a, you know, in the studio. And then some, I remember one episode I recorded on my phone in a pub with three of us. We were sitting <laughs> at a table in a booth, basically in a pub with a phone in between, sort of held up like that, uh, recording on a program called Ferrite. And yep. I edited it and uploaded it. During yeah, there while I was then. there, yeah, because that was the, that was the nature of this podcast. It was sort of an in the moment daily yeah. sort of thing, and it was uh, the audio was not great, but it was way better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, and, interesting. Yeah, if, uh, one thing on on phone or good phones. Um, well, I've only got really experience with iPhones, but uh, phones in general, they they spend a lot of time and effort on isolating talking. And so yes. your microphone and the and the back end of that microphone is really good at sort of trying to get rid of as much additional noise as possible and just focus on the vocal. And they're actually pretty amazing microphones because of that need to do that. Um, so recording on your phone is not the worst that you can have a worse microphone easily yes. than the one in your your phone. Yes, very easy. Mm. Now you've just thrown some gear up here. I have. So let's uh, let's delve is- into that before we wrap up. This is some um, wireless gear from Rode. Okay. And there is th- this cable here mm-hmm. for, uh, you, there is an Android alternative to this, but it's a lightning cable to USB-C. Huh. Okay. So you can plug this end into your phone and yep. there are the other cables. And then this end goes into the wireless unit. Okay. And from there you have two, two channel lav that you can then run. So if there was a podcast of two That's of you, you can sit there, you can, well, this does have the magnet on it. Put that on your chest. You can, you so, can clip so that let's there. just clarify this. This, uh, this wireless go to. So this is the receiver. That you is plug the receiver. Into whatever, plug be into it, your phone. Be it a phone or an audio device or camera. Yep. You can do all of those things. All of, the, all of them. And then that gives you, if you buy the right kit, it gives you two microphones. Yep. And these will sit on here. Yep. yep. Or uh, they actually will. You can put a uh, uh, lapel mic. Into yes. this, and that will then, you know, you can sit this back down here and have it a little bit more discreet. Yep. Or you can put or, it in a, in a stick like you've got here, and you yep. throw it. And you, you've got an interview microphone. Like Or so. if you do have a podcast where you've got a few more people and you're sitting a bit around from each other, you can you can actually just plug it into a normal microphone and you can have two channels of a normal mic. So huh. say there was four of us at this table currently, yep. you could have one sitting there capturing 
one side of the table and then another microphone pointing back, capturing the other side of the table. Did not realize that. Yeah. So yeah, you can just cool. plug a mic straight in. They are very versatile. And again, these these types of unit, there are alternatives from are. DJI. Small rig. There's newer, small rig. There's, yep. There is options, lots mm. of options out there. These are, these are pretty rad. If you're going to, if you're looking to improve your audio and your videos, but also something versatile, these little, uh, these little options that give you two yeah. mics in one receiver. Yeah, uh, they are fantastic. Yeah, are I very good. used that handheld little stick very extensively last weekend. Yep, fantastic. Just the ability to walk up to people, give it to them, and they also, they record internally. Mm. So we oh, were recording, yeah, right. we were recording onto the camera. Yes, and but if something's happened, something's happened, or if you know you don't have enough inputs, you've got another microphone that you want to capture everything with, but you want that little bit more isolated. Mm-hmm. You can just turn it on. If you, yeah, it'll just start recording. Yeah. And then later on, there's most editing softwares now have a sync button so that you can grab yes. both the things, you can sync it up, and the software will oh, work yeah. out and line everything up for you. Mm. And then you have. Amazing sounding lab recording that you just chuck over the top of your video and off you go. Very good. Now we are fast running out of time, Josh, because we got excited about equipment. We are. Uh, did we have commitments in the last episode? We we did. Did we do any of them? We did. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. We did one of them because we um, did our 10 minute TikTok channel. Oh, and we, we did. uploaded a video to it. We uploaded a couple videos to it, actually. We did. How did it go? Uh, let me go have a look. Oh, this yeah. is the one channel I don't have access to. <laughs> yeah, right. For good reason. <laughs> That's probably why not things happen. Not. Uh, we have uploaded two video. Oh no, one's in draft. Uh, technically uploaded. <laughs> technically uploaded. Uh. I know why because these. Oh, so one thing, it's not fun uploading a ten-minute video from your phone to TikTok yes. when you use your phone quite extensively. Yes, because uh, you have to keep TikTok open. You have to keep it to open. Keep uploading. And you have to sit there for like an hour. So uh, that is one of the dramas I've found of doing it from your phone. But the first one for a brand new channel uh, got 62 views and we, we picked up eight followers. Do we know it's, all the followers? It's not bad. You're one of them. I'm one of them. <laughs> and then others are – not all of them are people we know. Yeah, actually I can't imagine that we have because I haven't really – Actually told anyone about it. I, I noticed that a few of the people here listen to this podcast. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. But there are a couple of names in there that I don't know. So, uh, anyway, that's where it is. So, we're going to get that other one up there. Was there any yeah, other I've, commitments we meant to do or is that it? There was probably one for me and I've forgotten all about it. Okay. I probably didn't do it. Good, good. All right. Is there? I'm any... just going to claim I did it and it was a great success. <laughs> Winning. <laughs> good. <laughs> right. Well, so one thing that I have learnt, one thing that's uh, become very apparent uh, we can set some goals and some commitments, um, but at the moment with a business that is just jumping all over the shop, uh, being responsive to that is actually more critical. So yeah. here's my commitment, Josh. For the next couple of weeks, I will focus uh, very much on on what we're doing. With uh, We've got a big event in two weeks, so I'm really basically just clearing my schedule for that. <laughs> so, But that's going to be, that's gonna be a, a Bit of a, an up production. You're you're coming over, and you're going to bring one of the guys from here over as well, and actually yeah. start producing videos on the day of the event uh, because there's there's a finale for a season for a competition that's been running all year, and we want to be able to put videos out. Now you did this because you stayed up real late one night last. Uh, I did. In I've, Tassie, I've done it at two matches so far. Yeah, and you actually got videos out within the time of the match. The goal here is to allow you to film it. Or yeah, you know, both of you film it, but then have yeah. one person dedicated on editing and just sitting aside and editing it, yeah. while you know, so videos are going up during the competition. Yeah, uh, yeah, which I think is going to be great. And also then, because we know what also happens is we get to Sunday night and we're just like, oh, we're screwed, we're stuffed. We're, we're it, doing you're anything. doing big days. They're big yeah. days. And and then nothing happens that that night or that day. So you'd be able to see videos start going out that night and the next day. It'll be yeah. very good. Yeah, well, I know what my commitment can be. Yep, and to help with that. <laughs> well, one to help with that, but yes. in maybe not two – no, two-week commitment. I'll commit to this. Okay, here we go. Um, having I'm the, practicing my microphone technique with the handheld. Perfect. How's that going for you? It's going well so far. I think the audio is sounding good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, is From these events, I generally capture about anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 photos. Okay. Obviously go through them. I end up about 400, 500 photos that I like. Cool. These are good photos. These were ones that I would, you know, post, give to people, whatever. Um, having a website that people can go to to be able to go, I want to get, I want that photo. I want to pay for that photo. I yep. want to be able to get that, get that. So 
I want to get my back end sorted and have that so that in a couple of weeks. Back end of your photos sorted. Back end of the photos. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Good. Um, being able to have photos sitting up there ready to go so people can jump on the website and grab grab the photos that they like. At the end of the weekend. At the end of the weekend. Yep. Yeah. Maybe not from that weekend, but from, from some from of the months. season. All right. Look yep. forward to it, mate. Look forward to it. All right, that's it. Thanks, guys, for watching, and we will uh, either catch you on a Friday night, catch up. Stay tuned to our socials for details on that. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode. Catch you then. Cheers. Music. Da, 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 da. Finish out stuff. <laughs>